I always find peace here. A very strong sense when I think about it. About a place where I can call home. A safe sanctuary. Even from the first time you set your foot there. Bypassing various protocols which is nothing more than a means of ensuring protection. I always find the best people here who doesn't hesitate to give a sincere smile and reaching out his hand for me. Though there is now a space between us, but it's the distance that means we care to each other. I always feel safe here. With all the instability going on in the world, this place is able to provide the best. Prioritizing cleanliness, health, safety, and environmental sustainability. So nothing more I need to worry about. Nourishing my soul by knowing the creative souls behind all these beauty. Seeing the fire of passion that never stops cultivating the culture. Celebrating the irreplaceable magic of this earth is offering, where the adventure doesn't stop. In the end, I always feel like coming back here, feeling the air like no other. Wake up in the nature that cleanse all the burdens. is ready to welcome me again. find peace here. A very strong sense when I think about it. About a place where I can call home. A safe sanctuary. Even from the first time you set your foot there. Bypassing various protocols which is nothing more than a means of ensuring protection. I always find the best people here, who doesn't hesitate to give a sincere smile and reaching out his hand for me. Though there is now a space between us, but it's the distance that means we care to each other. I always feel safe here. With all the instability going on in the world, this place is able to provide the best. Prioritizing cleanliness, health, safety, and environmental sustainability. So nothing more I need to worry about.
nourishing my soul by knowing the creative souls behind all these beauty. Seeing the fire of passion that never stops cultivating the culture. Celebrating the irreplaceable magic of this earth is offering, where the adventure doesn't stop. In the end, I always feel like coming back here, feeling the air like no other. Wake up in the nature that cleanse all the burdens. Bali is ready to welcome me again. find peace here, a very strong sense when I think about it, about a place where I can call home. A safe sanctuary, even from the first time you set your foot there, bypassing various protocols which is nothing more than a means of ensuring protection. I always find the best people here, who doesn't hesitate to give a sincere smile and reaching out his hand for me. Though there is now a space between us, but it's the distance that means we care to each other. I always feel safe here. With all the instability going on in the world, this place is able to provide the best. Prioritizing cleanliness, health, safety, and environmental sustainability. So nothing more I need to worry about. my soul by knowing the creative souls behind all these beauty. Seeing the fire of passion that never stops cultivating the culture. Celebrating the irreplaceable magic of this earth is offering, where the adventure doesn't stop. In the end, I always feel like coming back here, feeling the air like no other. Wake up in the nature that cleanse all the burdens. is ready to welcome me again.
Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Selamat siang menjelang sore. I hope you can all hear me and see me clearly. My name is Andini Fendi. I will be your host for today. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, lecturers, and students from all over Indonesia. I saw people are shouting out from like all over places, from Indonesia and also from abroad. Welcome to the 2022 ASM Day celebration. Again, my name is Andi Nefendi. And since 2017, it has been a tradition for Asian and European countries to celebrate the birth of ASM on March 1st. Asia-Europe meeting is an inter international process formed in 96 with the aim of promoting dialogue and cooperation between Asia and Europe. The theme for this year's Asian Day celebration is digitalization of MSMEs bridging Asian economic recovery during the uh, pandemic. And we'll be focusing on the roles of digital economy and MSMEs in accelerating the post-pandemic economic recovery. Well, as we know, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a catalyst in the digitalization of MSMEs. 30 million MSMEs are projected to go digital by 2030. And please welcome our speakers for today. We have Ambassador Ngura from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, also Ambassador Morikawa from ASAF, ASAF and also Ambassador Lila Karsai from the Embassy of Hungary in Jakarta. We have Mr. Andreas from Bilibli.com, and last but not least, ada Padimas from Dekoruma.com. We, we hope that this year's ASM Day celebration will introduce ASM to the wider public. Hopefully, we'll also get a view of the key challenges, and also let's find a solution together so we have a better digitalization of MSMEs not only in Asia, but also Asia and Europe, in order to force even stronger partnerships between the two re uh, regions. And before we begin, I'm just making sure if uh, Ambassador is here to open. Ambassador Nguraswajaya, I think we're still waiting for Ambassador to join us. So let me just introduce our speakers for today. We have Ambassador Morikawa Toru, ASEF Executive Director. Is it ASEF or ASEF? Which, how, how to pronounce it correctly? Ambassador, just please inform me. Ambassador Morikawa is a seasoned career diplomat bringing decades of experience and expertise to ASEF. His previous postings include serving as ministers, Deputy Head of Mission, Embassy of Japan in Iran, and Minister Counselor, also Embassy of Japan in France, where, where he was in charge of various cultural exchange initiatives. He has also worked in the areas of media and regional economic cooperation and has the experience in cultivating and in enhancing partnerships for projects with different organizations, including the private sector. Hello, Ambassador. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, yes. Hi, Ambassador Hello. Monica. So is, it, is it ASEF or ASEF? Thank you for the most difficult question we are facing. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, sometimes we call ASEF, we, sometimes we call it ASEF. So the both okay. will do. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And the next speaker is Ambassador Lila Karsai, Ambassador of Hungary to Indonesia. Prior to assuming to her position as an ambassador, Ambassador Lila was the head of trade and investment at the Embassy of Hungary here in Jakarta. Ambassador Lila, how are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Very happy to have you with us too, because we'll be talking about opportunities. What can we collaborate together? Right to in order to have not only like a stronger partnership, but maybe like maybe there are opportunities that we need to delve into between Indonesia and Hungary or Asia and the and Europe in that matter. I think Hungary has a lot to offer. Uh, first of all, uh, we just have uh, very recently uh, our huge project, not just here in Indonesia, but also in the history of Hungary uh, as for the technology transfer uh, export. This is a 300 million US dollar project and um, with the Hungarian technology will be built the electronic toll payment system all around in Indonesia. 
by the end of this year. So I think uh, this is a um, great opportunity to show for uh, Hungary uh, that there are uh, plenty places um, or plenty room to collaborate with Indonesia. And I'm very lucky because I was uh, involved in this project uh, since five years ago. Mm -hmm. So this uh, project with the digital economy uh, is a very special and dear uh, topic for me. Absolutely. And how is your Bahasa ambassador? I know that you've been living here for a while now. Well, it could have been better for sure, uh, but I am on it to, <laughs> to have a more advanced uh, level for my Indonesian. However, if you don't mind, I will uh, give my um, answers in English. Oh, no, uh, no, don't mind at all, because we have a global audience right now. And maybe in a separate event, we'll be uh, doing it in Bahasa so you can uh, brush it up a little bit. Anyway, okay, we proceed to the next speaker. Oh, Padirjen sudah hadir. Uh, Padirjen is here with us, but we have Mas Andreas Ardian Pramaditya, the Vice President of Gallery Indonesia, Bibli.com. And then Mas Dimas Hari Priyawan is the CEO and Co-Founder of Dekoruma.com. Before we begin the dialogue, I would like to welcome Ambassador Nguras Swajaya, Director General for American and European Affairs from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia. Ambassador Swajaya is a career diplomat at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and has served more, for more than 30 years. Prior to assuming his position as Director General, Ambassador Swajaya has held many strategic positions, uh, such as the Ambassador of Indonesia to Cambodia and then to ASEAN and also to Singapore. Without further ado, please welcome Ambassador Ngura Swajaya to deliver a keynote speech. Ambassador, the screen is yours. Ambassador is still on mute. I'm sorry. Mute. Okay, now we can hear you clearly, Ambassador. Okay. Yeah. All right. So thank you very much, uh, Andini. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, His Excellency, uh, Bapak Sumadi Broto Duningrat, uh, ASEF Governor for Indonesia. His Excellency, Mada, uh, Ms. Lila Karsai, the Ambassador of Hungary uh, to Indonesia. Uh, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Morikawa Toru, ASEF uh, Executive Director, esteemed representative of ASEM embassies here in Jakarta, uh, distinguished speakers and participants, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon uh, to uh, all of you. I hope to find you all well in these uh, difficult situations. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, and also excellencies, when the word ASM is mentioned, only, I'm afraid, a handful of people would immediately link it to one of the largest regional uh, cooperation fora. Uh, since its inception in March 1996, ASM has been used as the bridge to foster growth cross-regional progress and partnership between Asia and Europe, as well as means to strengthen dialogue, build mutual understanding among its member states. So I think ASEM is a very important and essential bridge of communication that will allow continuous dialogue among all of the uh, member states to achieve our common objective. Much like ASEAN, UN, APEC, G20, and many other international organizations, ASEM has been a part and partial of Indonesia's foreign policy and diplomacy. Since the beginning, Indonesia played an active role in various areas of cooperation of common interest, not only to enhance the capacity building connectivity, but also people-to-people uh, -people interaction and a cooperation program that will help all of us to attain the sustainable development goals. That is why we are here today celebrating 
SM26 anniversary uh, by spreading information, increasing awareness of SM, and promoting Indonesia's work in the forum. And for the third time in a row, we are celebrating SM anniversary virtually. I hope that next year we will be able to celebrate in person. We are all looking forward for that. So uh, despite this is organized virtually, I hope that this will also contribute to whatever objective that we are going to achieve. In our efforts to enable economic recovery, this year's SM Day commemoration talk shows the theme of digitalization of uh, small and medium-sized enterprises bridging SM economic recovery during the pandemic. And this is, I think, very important. And this is also one of the priority areas of Indonesia's presidency in the G20, because we know that digitalization is very crucial, and this is even more crucial in the future. And we know that many uh, micro and small medium enterprises in Indonesia are even embracing digitalization in order to also uh, benefits uh, their uh, growth and their business in the middle, especially in the middle of this uh, pandemic situation. Excellencies, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, take a small sample of ASEAN countries in ASEM, for example, despite the pandemic and given its large population of 600 million, ASEAN remains a promising market for digital economy. And this is indeed very vibrant and we see that even during the pandemic and we believe that this is also going to grow very fast in the future when we are talking about digitalization we are talking about all of the uh, uh, internet of things and 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 the use of digital economy uh, to uh, uh, involve the micro and small medium-sized uh, economies in uh, southeast asia Digital economy in Southeast Asia in 2019 hit 100 billion US dollars and expected to grow up to 300 billion US dollars by 2025. The number of internet users in ASEAN continues to grow. Currently, 360 million people are connected to the internet and about 100 million people are involved in the digital economy. So you see, uh, it's about 90% uh, are connected uh, to the internet through their mobile phone. And from this uh, figure, we see that when so many people are connected to the internet, we see al almost half, almost 50% are using it for productive purposes. I think this is a good indication. And we hope that this is going to grow uh, in the future. So they are not going to use uh, internet connection or their, in, their connection to the internet uh, on things that we don't uh, expect to happen like hoax and also, uh, you know, uh, falsehood information. So using this as a bridge to develop further their economy, to develop further their business is a very positive indication that we need to support. COVID-19 is uh, perhaps, uh, you know, we hope and certainly, we expect that this is only once in a lifetime. Uh, but again, uh, we uh, should not also uh, be, uh, uh, you know, uh, unable to use this opportunity in order to increase our pre preparedness uh, in the case of the situation, uh, the same situation happening in the future. We know that COVID-19 uh, affecting all countries, not only uh, least developed countries, developing countries, but also developed uh, countries. That's, not, that's the reason why I think international cooperation is indispensable to help us facing the pandemic since it's affect the livelihood of billions of people. And also uh, the, 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 the effect of the pandemic in terms of the economic effect, effect in terms of the social effect and, and, and so on and so forth. Newly established startup companies are innovating with digital technologies to uh, assist or even replace business-to-business -business logistics and distribution. 
Some homegrown Indonesian digital financing firm are among other Investry, Acceleran, and Pinja Modal. They have been greatly assisting financial inclusion and also developing micro business and small medium enterprises in Indonesia. Indonesian based Ritase is offering digital platform to resolve the logistic challenge in Indonesia, connecting shippers to medium scale transporters, as well as thousands of truckers in many parts of Indonesia. For that example, of course, uh, the famous Gojek and also Grab. I think I, do, I should not elaborate that uh, even further because this has already been very familiar for the people here in the Southeast Asian region. The current COVID-19 pandemic served as an eye-opener on how the technology has significantly kept the economy running. Technology and digital economy overcome physical restrictions and limitations caused by the pandemic. President uh, Joko Widodo once said that the development of digital economy must trigger and contribute toward the domestic economy, especially micro, small, and medium enterprises, or MSME, business products. The utilization of, uh, to the digital economy for MSMEs has, without a doubt, that helped both small businesses recover faster, but also strengthen the economy as a whole. Indonesia, through Digital Economy National Strategy, uh, which encourages the digitalization of MSMEs in cities and rural areas, this strategy is supported by Job Creation uh, Act that accommodates the development of digital economy, government effort to expand, and digital infrastructures in Indonesia, as well as campaigns such as Proudly Made uh, in Indonesia made in Indonesia uh, national movement. Our uh, statistical bureau recorded that as of today, more than 63 million SMS, SMS, MSMEs in Indonesia with about 12 million Indonesian MSMEs uh, by June 2021 operating digitally using an online platform. By 2030, it is predicted that 30 million businesses will take place online. Local government also plays a significant role in pushing digitalization of traditional MSMEs, ensuring inclusiveness as well as sustainable economic growth through digitalization as key future for our economic uh, growth. In our uh, effort as well, here at the ministry, we uh, established and created Inner Access, a digital platform that integrates uh, and also promote the interactions uh, between uh, Indonesia businesses with uh, their counterparts in uh, uh, America and Europe, and to the, uh, particularly here we are talking about Latin America and the Caribbean, and also uh, Europe, which integrates not only uh, uh, permanent exhibit exhibitions of Indonesia's potential uh, export commodity, but also uh, uh, promoted the uh, investment uh, opportunities as well as tourism opportunities in Indonesia that can be accessed 24-7, uh, 360 days by all of the potential uh, business partners uh, all over the world. Uh, the World Bank notes that e-commerce has increased the resilience of Indonesia's small businesses during COVID-19 pandemic. To date, Indonesia is proud to uh, proud home to uh, 10 unicorns, and we hope that there will be an additional one more decacorn than we are going to have uh, two decacorn uh, very soon, uh, operating uh, and also uh, based from Indonesia. Today, we are indeed honored to have the representative of two Indonesia's leading digital businesses from blibli.com, the Kuruma. Uh, the koruma.com uh, as speakers of our SM uh, event today, along with my distinguished colleague, Ambassador Karsai of Hungary, as well as Ambassador Toru of ASEP. The future demands better international cooperation, stronger collective leadership, and more decisive actions in recovering the economy from the severe impacts of the, uh, of the pandemic is badly needed.
digital economy is one of the answer, how we can expedite our economic uh, recovery. So I'm very positive that we will have a very good uh, discussion uh, involving uh, so many people here. And I think this will not only give you a better understanding on what ASM is all about and what ASM can contribute, but at the same time also we would like to encourage and to invite the younger generations who are participating in this event to also uh, uh, you know, utilize the connection, the uh, interactions uh, for whatever you are going to do. So then we will be able to uh, really make, as what I said in the beginning, using ASM as a bridge to Asia, between Asia and Europe. And that is very important. Uh, dialogue, conversation is very important. Diplomacy in one day is much more important than no diplomacy in one year. So I think that is the message that I would like to make. And I wish you all uh, a very good and fruitful discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you. And then now I would like to greet all of the audience who are just with us, joining us uh, today. Uh, welcome to our discussion. If any of you would like to participate by asking a question, please do so with the Q&A column you'll see on your Zoom uh, screen. Put your name and then your affiliation and then your questions or comments and who would you like it to address to. And our team will pick and choose uh, the, the questions and comments along with the discussion flow. Let me re-invite all the speakers, panelists who are here with us today. Please welcome Ambassador Morikawa Toru, ASEF Executive Director. And also he was Ambassador Morikawa is a seasoned career diplomat, bringing decades of experience and expertise to ASAP. Next, we have Ambassador Lila Karsai, Ambassador of Hungary to Indonesia. Before her position as an ambassador, Ambassador Lila was the head of trade and investment at the Embassy of Hungary here in Jakarta. Well, welcome, Ambassador. And next, we have Andreas Ardian Pramaditya, the Vice President of Gallery Indonesia, Bibli.com. And Andreas was the has been the Vice President of Gallery Indonesia since 2017, before he held a position as a Senior Manager at Bibli.com. And prior to Bibli, Andreas has worked in several banks. Welcome, Andreas. Welcome, Andreas. Glad to have you here. Terima kasih, Mbak Andini. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Thank you for being here. And next, but not last but not least, we have Bimas Hari Priyawan, CEO and co-founder of Dekoruma.com. Since 2015, Dimas has co-founded Dekoruma.com with the aim of building a trusted home and living platform for all customers, suppliers, designers, and service providers to interact and transact with transparency. Hi, Dimas. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, I'm, I'm one of your customers. Oh, thank it's you. It's FYI. 
Thank you so much for being here. Sekali yeah, lagi for Bapak Ibu sekalian, I'm going to use both bahasa and, and English. For those of you, bagi teman-teman yang ingin memberikan pertanyaan, please kindly put your questions, comments, anything, put it on the Q&A box. Don't forget to mention your name, afiliasinya dari mana, kemudian pertanyaannya untuk siapa. Kindly make it very concise, straightforward, oke, okay, singkat saja supaya nanti mudah dipilihnya oleh teman-teman di belakang layar dan akan dimasukkan dalam diskusi flow kita siang hari ini. Oke, okay, let's begin our discussion. I would like to um, start with Ambassador Morikawa. Ambassador, maybe you can share with us a little bit what is ASEP is working on, what is it uh, what does it do, and then what is like the... Uh, The, the, the contribution to lessen the gap in digital advancement between Asia and Europe in this, in this matter? And also, what is the idea, the work that you do for digital economy and MSMEs? Ambassador, screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, again, so uh, your Excellency Ambassador Juna uh, Sawajaya. Distinguished participants, and thank you so much for having me here uh, today uh, with you. I really have been looking forward to participating in this uh, meeting uh, because I I think that I, I can learn a lot from here. So um, today I'm uh, very glad uh, to share some, some thought uh, with you on the uh, digital economy and the MSMEs. But uh, before that, as you said, uh, please allow me to reiterate. Uh, ASEF statement on the 1st of March, ASEM Day. Uh, yes, namely, then let us remember that peace is a precondition for implementing all the sustainable development goals. That peace can only be realized through the pursuit of dialogue. Violence is not a solution. Assaults are with the innocent people on the ground whose lives have been suddenly torn. Distinguished participant, at the sole permanent institution of the ASEM process, ASEF is committed to bringing together the people of Asia and Europe to address common global challenges in the spirit of peace, cooperation, mutual understanding, and benefit. Promoting digitalization and e-commerce is one of the key priorities in ASEM agenda to further enhance connectivity and cooperation between Asia and Europe. It will be also important to too for the greener economy. The pandemic COVID-19 highlighted the importance on the resilience of the digital economy, the digital and e-commerce sectors boomed during the pandemic. Global e-commerce sales are projected to increase further to 6.5 trillion by 2023, which represents a quarter of global retail sales. Uh, while we recognize the rapid digitalization of economies helped to mitigate the economic downturn caused by the pandemic, we need to be mindful of the numerous opportunities and challenges faced by countries due to the speed and the scale at which online transactions and uh, interactions have grown. Among the issues related to the digitalization of our economy, ASEAN partner countries need to ensure that uh, micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs, are also able to function in the digital economy for this growth to be inclusive and equitable. As the world moves from crisis mode to post-pandemic economy and recovery, the role of MSMEs cannot be ignored. Smaller business can be agile in responding to shifting market patterns, but their size also makes them vulnerable. MSMEs are still lagging in terms of digitalization compared to large farms and urban companies. This suggests that the significant barriers to digitalization remain for MSEs. Ensuring that MSMEs can overcome such barriers is key to integrating them into wider national, regional, and global supply chains and access their full market potential. There are so many matters to address for that. In order for MSMEs to start the digital transaction, 
A set of digital applications and equipment should be provided as well as a skill and the knowledge for the use and the management of such tools. And it should be at an affordable cost. Affordable cost. It is also to be noted that in many Asian countries, there remain millions of people who don't have the basic preconditions for the digital economy, such as access to electricity or online networks. We should also not forget the issues of the cybersecurity, including data protection and that of the consumer protection. Advocacy or raising awareness on such issues among MSME is also indispensable. These challenges are only a few examples. To address all these matters, to promote digital economy transformation needs strong policy guidance at national level. We have an inspiring example here in Indonesia, taking the lead in promoting e-commerce and becoming the largest digital economy in Southeast Asia. This region's digital economy is expected to double to US uh, 363 US uh, million dollars by 2025, and about half of it will be in Indonesia. Government initiatives like the National E Commerce Roadmap and the 2020 Go Digital Vision can be instrumental in maximizing the country's digital potential and ensuring the inclusion of MSME in the digitalization process. Even though each country has their own development of strategic plan, and there is no blueprint that will work for everyone, we need to coordinate and build a seamless digital global economy. As the digital economy is developing rapidly beyond the national borders to larger regions and to a global scale. Very well. So Very yes. well, Ambassador. Yes, let's. Uh, uh, we still have uh, uh, a lot of time, and then a lot of questions okay. coming in. So let's okay. make it like a more uh, a fluid discussion, so we can uh, share the screen also with the other speakers. Maybe I will share uh, uh, the screen for Ambassador Lila. Uh, Ambassador Lila, we know that Hungary has one of the most advanced digital infrastructures among European countries. Maybe you can share like the best practices in developing the, this digital infrastructure, but there's come like a downside of it. When we see the MSMEs in Hungary is not as, uh, as big that we can expect, you know, with having this a strong infrastructure. And so what is the government do uh, or has been done to push more digitalization of MSMEs in Hungary? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, all the panelists and the audience as well. Uh, for, uh, answering for your question, um, focusing on uh, the broadband coverage, for example, which is uh, very high uh, in Hungary um, uh, to the uh, European level. So Hungary has largely completed uh, the implementation of the national info communication strategy between 2014 and 2020 and the, uh, and the digital success program uh, 2.0 launched in uh, 2017. Certainly, this contributed a lot to implement fast broadband coverage in Hungary, which stand at 89% now, a bit higher than the EU, uh, EU average. So to talk about best practices, I think it is uh, important to understand uh, the system and the roles. In Hungary, there are four main authorities which has been responsible for the development of uh, broadband strate uh, strategy. Uh, it was involved the Ministry of Innovation and Technology, which is uh, concerning for the strategy making, the Governmental Information Technology Development Agency, which um, manages IT project dealing with central public, uh, public administration and guided by the government, for example, the super fast internet program. Uh, also, the National Media Info Communications Authority that uh, provides uh, the regulation uh, background concerning fixed and wireless electronic communication. And uh, last but not least, the Ministry of Interior, uh, which is responsible for the e-government issues. 
It is also crucial to underline uh, that there is always room for further development. Therefore, to keep going on the digital infrastructure development, Hungary approved in 2021 the National Digitalization Strategy 2021-2030, uh, which aims uh, at providing 98% uh, of household with the gigabit network as well as highlights increasing digital skills of the population, digitalization of business process, as well as uh, increase the use of e-government services. About the MSME's uh, development, uh, it is true that, um, uh, that the capacities of the SMEs to adapt new technologies are fairly low. And they, are, uh, and they also face constraints in internal resources, given the, their size, uh, such as human capital uh, or financial resources. And external resources, uh, for example, uh, fierce competition. In general, it can be concluded that digital technologies are mainly applied by larger enterprises in Hungary. However, there is an opportunity to improve this performance since the digital infrastructure is about the EU average. People's use of internet is also good in Hungary and populations digital scares are also close to the EU average. Uh, along these lines, the role of governmental support was increased to have SMEs in their adjustments to change the environment. Uh, in recent years, Hungarian government has adopted several programs to have SMEs to improve their skills and innovation uh, capabilities and adapt industry for uh, 4.0 technologies. Uh, just one more thing to add, um, to do so, as, uh, as uh, previously I mentioned, the new digitalization strategy 2021-2030 recognizes that more support is needed to digitalize the economy. Its, over, uh, its overarching objective is to identify and exploit the potential of digi digitalization in the economy, education, research, uh, development and innovation, as well as the public administration. Uh, such as do online tax statements, uh, use online cash registers, thereby improving the country's competitiveness uh, and the well-being of its uh, citizens. Very well, Ambassador, we would like to talk more about it, especially you mentioned an opportunity that we can delve into between Indonesia and Hungary to strengthen the uh, MSME's uh, uh, relations between the two countries. Uh, now I would like to proceed to Mas Andreas, Mas Andreas uh, from Galeri Indonesia, yeah. Blibli.com. Uh, maybe Mas Andreas, you, and then you can use Bahasa Indonesia uh, yes, yeah. to answer this. Uh, maybe you can share what is Galeri Indonesia? Is it like a branch from Blibli.com? And what is the purpose for this? And what are the challenges or things that we need to improve in order to have, I can see that this is all the... Uh, UMKM products, right? Yeah, um, right? What can we do to elevate this? Because they cannot stay micro or small all the time. They need to yes. level up at one point. So what what have you guys been doing in order to okay. level up, level, level them up? Okay, Mbak Anini, thank you. Okay, jadi kalau kita bicara tentang uh, Blibli Galeri Indonesia, memang uh, ini sesuatu yang memang sengaja, uh, deliberately dibuat untuk memprovide um, teman-teman UMKM atau MSMI yang ada di Indonesia, tapi dari level produsen. Jadi dalam arti bahwa bukannya berarti teman-teman uh, SMI ataupun UMKM yang lain yang tidak tidak produsen tidak boleh bergabung, kan banyak yang reseller tentunya. Itu tetap boleh join, tapi masuk ke kategori yang lain. Sedangkan kategori dari Indonesia ini uh, kita buat memang untuk menampung teman-teman produsen UMKM yang ada tersebar di seluruh Indonesia. Itu yang pertama. Nah, kedua, kemudian apa sih yang kita kerjakan, what been doing uh, dengan si Galeri Indonesia ini. Jadi, sebetulnya ceritanya itu uh, kita kembali, uh, we back to 2014 gitu ya, pada saat kami uh, uh, diminta oleh Kemenkop saat itu uh, untuk mencoba untuk try uh, apa produk-produk UMKM untuk masuk ke ranah digital. Ya, Jadi, uh, kita waktu itu coba, tapi berkat uh, kita coba dari situ, tapi berkat itu uh, kita banyak sekali mendapatkan undangan untuk keliling Indonesia saat itu. We almost went to 34 province all across Indonesia. 
kita ketemu langsung ya we met directly with the uh, MSMI of course ya dengan uh, pemerintah provinsi daerah dan semua pihak yang memang punya binaan UMKM atau MSMI saat itu seperti itu. Nah, kemudian terlepas dari itu uh, nama UMKM atau SMI ini kemudian jadi booming pada saat pandemik. Ya pada saat pandemik Uh, itu dengan uh, dari pemerintah mengadakan gerakan bangga buatan Indonesia saat itu ya pada saat itu jadi uh, every SME has to be digital saat itu jadi semua dikerahkan untuk masuk ke platform digital jadi ini ada shifting behavior antara uh, antara juga konsumen maupun juga si produsen nah inilah kesempatan kita pada saat itu semua berbondong-bondong masuk ke ranah digital terutama di Galeri Indonesia Beli Beli. Jadi di situ kita bergabung bersama teman-teman platform e-commerce yang lain ya dalam IDEA gitu Indonesian E-commerce Association. Kita berusaha untuk mendigitalkan teman-teman dari SMI ini hampir seluruhnya. Nah kita sudah berjalan ini tahun ketiga ya third of, third, apa tour of beautynya sudah tiga kali. Setiap tahun itu berbeda fokus dari pemerintah untuk pengembangan dari UMKM-nya. Ya tentunya banyak sekali ya belum lagi daerah tujuan super wisata dan sebagainya. Nah kemudian kita pertama kita melakukan apa yang namanya penjualan secara online. Nah kemudian selepas setelah mereka bisa berjualan secara online kita tambahkan apa lagi. Jadi kita punya namanya Blibli University. Jadi di situ merupakan tempat untuk para seller, pedagang semua untuk mendapatkan ilmu tambahan mengenai gimana digital marketing itu, ya dengan segala macam uh, kurikulum yang mereka buat. Nah kita melakukan uh, semacam <coughs> apa ya bisa dikatakan uh, lomba UMKM, ya kita bikin uh, seperti uh, kita sebutnya Big Start ya Best Indonesian Good. Best Indonesian Good itu kita tayangkan memang sebelum pandemi waktu itu, tapi kita untuk choose atau memilih UMKM terbaik yang ada di Indonesia, ya itu juga diberikan mentor dan sebagainya. Nah setelah upload, eh, setelah eh, proses digital ataupun secara online yang mereka sudah bisa, kita sekarang coba bantu untuk arahkan yang pertama untuk masuk ke ranah offline, mbak. Kenapa? Karena eh, gimana pun juga orang itu tidak akan tertarik atau langsung mencari barang UMKM di online dari segitu sekian puluh juta barang yang ada di sana. Ya jadi ini perlu terus menerus kita suarakan, kita kita teriakkan dari semua segala macam sisi gitu ya. Nah itu yang kita lakukan. Ya jadi kemudian kita coba masukin ke ranah offline. Nah kenapa kita quote unquote kita paksa mereka untuk masuk ke offline? Karena SME itu adalah Uh, apa namanya uh, masalah yang berikutnya ketemu adalah masalah perizinan ya masalah perizinan itu bukan masalah yang sepele karena juga pasti harus ada sum of money yang mereka keluarkan dan seterusnya dan seterusnya nah kalau dengan masuk ke ranah offline tentunya akan kita bedakan lagi levelnya mana yang bisa yang mana yang sudah memiliki izin-izin yang sudah ditentukan dan seterusnya nah ini kita lakukan kita masuk ke ranah baik itu yang bisa disebut toko kelontong ya mums and pop store ataupun kita masuk ke modern market ke modern market ya nah kemudian yang ketiga biasa kita juga melakukan ekspor ya saat ini kita kan karena beli beli sendiri sifatnya lokal ya dibangun orang lokal jadi kita sifatnya melayan Indonesia kita harus mengandeng kerjasama dengan e-commerce lain sebutnya e to e e-commerce to e-commerce Ya, jadi kita melakukan itu saat ini dengan teman-teman di Malaysia, namanya You Beli, itu kita mencoba produk-produk UMKM atau SMI ini kita kirimkan dari Indonesia, tapi dijual di platformnya di You Beli di sana. Ini salah satu bentuk yang kita coba, tapi ini sekali lagi bukan perkara mudah, ya. Right. kita coba create path-nya, tapi masih banyak sekali hal yang harus kita lakukan supaya ini semua going smoothly. Gitu, okay. Mbak. So a lot of that blibli.com are, I guess this is a uh, Galeri Indonesia has been doing by making like the online platform, but uh, to build the infrastructure, I guess, for MSMEs yeah. in Indonesia. Yes. Yes. But at the end of the day, you need to bring them out of online platform yes. in order to be, I guess, globally renowned because now you already started in Malaysia. Yeah. And then now we're, we, we're having this ASM day. So hopefully not only Malaysia, it can be <laughs> to Europe. 
this could be something that we can uh, uh, an opportunity that we can uh, collaborate i guess that's in right the future. that's right yeah okay right, so, uh and um, let's proceed to uh, mas dimas mas i'm sorry mas dimas hari priawan uh, from dekoruma uh for those of you yang enggak tahu dekoruma please look it up dekoruma.com so you can you know Uh, you can get a, a better view of what they're doing. They're amazing. Uh, also, they sell a lot of local products. Is it like 100% local products, Mas Dimas? It's like 90 plus percent. Some 90 of the plus. Are so important. Yeah. It's amazing because a lot of brands that I don't even know exist in decoruma.com. So uh, what is the breakthrough for you guys during the pandemic? And how can other digital entrepreneurs, as we see that they're popping up in the country, can learn from Decoruma? Yeah, so I think like uh, we all knew uh, the we have. I mean, we are still in pandemics anyway. Two years after uh, the first COVID cases arises in Indonesia two years ago, and uh, work from home is becoming like uh, you know normal. And and I think in general we are very fortunate um, for two things. Number one, by the time COVID hits two years ago, we are digital ready, and along with all of our merchants, designer, contractors. I mean, like uh, we have been. Uh, investing in how to make sure that from sourcing, uh, designing, uh, all the way to construction, all are digitally connected. Yeah, And then when COVID hits, basically what changes is the consumer behavior. I think most of us stay at home. And for the first time in I don't know how many decades, homes becomes homes. What I mean by that, I think before COVID, houses was just like a, a hotel. You know, you, you leave work at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. in the morning, get stuck in traffic jam, then you come back home at 8, 9 p.m. In the weekend, you go to cafe, Bali. And yeah, a house is becoming a hotel. But um, obviously, thing has changed. Uh, like everyone stayed at home, basically cooking, uh, teaching the kids, uh, homeschooling, working, which we have seen, I think, As compared to when we started in 2029, we are probably now six, seven times larger as a businesses. And not just us who have benefits, it's actually the merchants, the partners that we have. And probably uh, in the construction industry, uh, whether you are you know, building a kitchen set or building a, like a huge tower, it was severely affected by the supply chain. I think we knew that the shipping costs rises almost 10x Um, a lot of supply discrepancy because, for example, China was locked um, initially. But I think, fortunately, uh, as you mentioned, um, Bandini, 90% of products are sourced in Indonesia, so we are not, uh, you know, immediately affected by the supply chain. And then, like what we have seen, uh, we are able to actually design your home via this kind of call. So I think in the past, what happens is if a designer or a architect wants to do something, they have to meet you. They will bring these bags full of materials, uh, you know, like uh, different types of lamination, colors, uh, clothes, and etc. And then they have to go and uh, to your home to do measurement. And you know, every time there is some changes, you have to meet in, let's say, cafe or Starbucks. You know, like sharing the ideas. But uh, we have proven that everything can go online. So I think that's uh, what makes us different. And in terms of how uh, digital comes in, I think. Uh, the industry that we are in, whether in the uh, in the furniture, construction, interior, uh, is one of the least invested industry, not just in Indonesia but across the world. So to give you a perspective, like I think seven years ago, uh, when we started the Koruma, everything was still done on pen and paper. So which means that uh, if anyone wants to buy, uh, let's say, a sofa, you have to go through all those yeah. different stores and then you have to call them one by one doing everything on whatsapp and all the changes in the design in the drawings has to be communicated through emails which you know can be easily misplaced and there is no economic of scale so every single project you have to start from zero i think that's the reasons why um it's a big market but there is not much big player if i mean uh, probably bandini if you can recall five brand names of furniture Probably now we can only recall three, and we are one of it. Yeah, so <laughs> I think, and if I ask you, can you recall any of five top designers and architects or contractor business in Indonesia? I don't think you can name it. And anyone, I think we have like 300 people here. I'm, I'm not sure whether we can even name five. So I think that's the reasons why it's a such big businesses, but it's full of inefficiency. And I think we are here to make sure that uh, we don't just digitalize. I think we bring them uh, the technology that uh, has been 
you know on delay for like probably two decades. Uh, yeah, so I think that's just in short on what we are doing, Bandini. Very well. Okay, now uh, since we are and uh, we have accept so many questions and also comments, and we do have time limitations, so please feel free, guys, to send in your questions. I will deliver it to our panel. But let's discuss speakers. Uh, this is from uh, an organization point of view, Ambassador Morikawa, and then also from an, a country point of view, and from the players on the ground, which is Mas Andreas and Mas Dimas. There's a an, a good question actually from uh, Akbar Eka Prayoga. He is from Scholar uh, Export. What will be the most effective strategy, let's say from a country, and I would like to uh, take this further for businesses like you guys, Dimas and Mas Andreas in Indonesia. Uh, so how can we really leverage this digital business to restore the economy after the pandemic? And, and now everyone is going digital. You know, Hungary is opening up opportunities, right? We heard from Ambassador Morika, while well, also there are opportunities that we can look into, but how can we make it more effective? I guess that will be like the right question to do it. Ambassador Morika, uh, what about you answer first and then Ambassador Lila? can follow and let's hear from the business side. Thank you very much. So that uh, I think that uh, the, the e-commerce or e-digitalization that uh, as a, uh, uh, the, the, uh, Mr. Lima said that it, it is a, uh, was a spreading beyond the, the, uh, the border and the, the beyond the region. So I think that, that we need uh, some coordination uh, in the policy or the, the legal system that I wondered how, how to uh, extend the protection of the, the consumer's protection of the, the data is uh, something uh, to be challenged. Uh, it's a challenge, common challenge for the many countries. So in that sense that, uh, that uh, regional organizations or the government's coordination should uh, be ready to mm -hmm. back up that, uh, the BS fears. And I think that the communication is very important. What is the program? Mm. And and uh, and, uh, and the government schemes and the inter national organization scheme should be very uh, keen to that, and that uh, and then that uh, with the co uh, coordination cooperation should feed should be healed back to the ground, and that right. we can uh, advance yeah, gradually to the good uh, direction. Mm, very well. What about what do you think, Ambassador Lila? I think it's uh, very important in terms of, uh, for example, data protection uh, to create standards and why the standards are important. Uh, like in more developed countries, uh, we are very uh, eager to know what uh, is happening with our data. What is it used for by the businesses or by the governmental body? Therefore, uh, the EU created the GDPR in uh, 2018. And uh, that is uh, uh, aimed to uh, empower the citizens to be aware of their rights. It also enhances uh, transparency and gives individuals uh, enforceable rights, such as the right of access, the recertification, erasure, and the right to object and the right to uh, data portability. Mm -hmm. uh, Business-wise, I think, uh, including the uh, SMEs, uh, now have just uh, one set of rules uh, to which uh, to add here. The GDPR also creates a level uh, playing field with companies not established in the EU, but operating there as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, very well. Uh, from, yeah, Dimas, go ahead. Yeah, so um, probably I'll, I'll, I'll providing a different view. Um, I came from a technology uh, company. I think uh, we call it startup in Indonesia. And one mm -hmm. thing that everyone here should be realize, probably there are like multi-billions investment pouring into Indonesia and Southeast Asia in the past mm -hmm. 10 years. I think uh, Blibli and the Kuruma and you know uh, what uh, the ambassador earlier mentioned is actually uh, just a few examples of it. And when we get this investment, basically we, we the way we have to do is we have to spend it, and then we have to reinvest in you know in the businesses. I think for example, we built the entire ecosystem digital network that basically enables uh, you know any MSME or anyone actually to do business. And I'm sure this being done by Blibli, Tokopedia, Gojek, and etc. So as much as it feels a little bit complicated, but I think to be very honest.
as anyone who doing business now, it's much easier by 10 times as compared to 10 years ago. Uh, you know, like uh, anybody in across Indonesia, uh, you can start doing your own business as simple as, you know, on the touch of your hand. Uh, we, at the end of the past, you had to set up a store, you have to, you know, rent it, you have to hire people, make some renovation and et cetera. But right now you can, you know, do it from home. I think the most, the most important part is from my understanding is uh, number one, understanding what the customer needs. And I think earlier on, Ambassador Lil, uh, Lila mentions about the data and about the standard is something that we felt that too. So on contrary, Indonesia is known for a very good quality uh, furniture export. But on reality, um, unfortunately, out of let's say probably 2000, uh, let's say furniture makers in Jepara or even in Yogyakarta, probably only like 20, 30% that are, let's say, qualified in terms of the way the products has been consistently produced uh, on certain time lane, uh, timeline. And, you know, uh, with the kind of service quality, and not just on the productions, but all the way from, let's say, uh, distribution and et cetera. So the number one is obviously had to understand uh, which one that they want to focus, which customers that they are aiming on. And, and and go and basically build uh, the product uh, using the quality. I mean, through the quality that that uh, you know, like the customer needs. I think that's just something that we feel uh, it's really lacking, even for the industry that Indonesia is very well known for. Um, mm -hmm. I think right now uh, we only able to help around 200, 300 merchants so far. Uh, but the difference is these merchants are willing to invest and learn and actually improve on the quality. Uh, but eventually right now, um, what happened with the either 800, 700 merchants that you wouldn't be able to partner? I think it's more on the focus modes or what is important for them. And unfortunately, many of us are uh, very, how to say, many of them, and I think Indonesia in general, um, has to really improve the quality of the products. Mm. I mean, the uh, consistency, SME, I guess, yes. yeah, of the quality. Correct. Yeah. Uh, UKM SME is not an excuse for you to providing a subpar product. I think mm -hmm. uh, we have seen as someone who probably doing you know a couple of millions every single month, but they have grown now to like tens uh, and even hundred million dollars a month. They started from technically nothing, but one thing that they kept that they keep like from the day one we partner with them, all you know, is the quality. And I think that's the easiest uh, way to, you know, rip the digital uh, opportunity because the money is there. I mean, you have heard right. like multiple companies get multiple fundings, like a huge funding every single time. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mas Andreas. Okay. Thank your you. Thoughts? Uh, yeah. uh, probably yeah, the same answer with um, Dimas as well. Yeah. Cuma bedanya it's the different bahwa Dimas fokus. Uh, in uh, home and living products ya. Sementara mm -hmm. kita di beli beli kita menampung semua all across uh, product from all across Indonesia from our SMEs. Jadi yang kita lakukan adalah karena we cannot do it alone, so we have to collaborate with uh, third party. Siapapun yang bisa membantu untuk membawa produk-produk uh, SME ini untuk pergi kemanapun. Ya, yeah. let's say ya yeah, like uh, Ambassador Lila say maybe we can collaborate and then make our product go to Hungary or maybe uh, somewhere else. Itu tapi yang pasti uh, uh, masalah kualitas ya kemudian masalah sustainability dari produk itu sendiri dan pasti banyak hal lagi yang harus diperhatikan oleh teman-teman UMKM. Jadi we we have to very very curated all the products before we make a deal with uh, our uh, third party or something like that. Mm -hmm. Seperti itu sih Mbak. Jadi uh, kita coba untuk selalu bicara sama mereka yang uh, menawarkan ya. Istilahnya mm -hmm. mereka menawarkan, eh hey, uh, mau nggak ini uh, produk yuk pergi ke satu negara A, satu negara B. Ya kita kita jajaki, kita selalu akan jajaki itu. Kita coba untuk bicara sama mereka, uh, possible or not. Kalau memang possible, why not? Gitu. Karena yang perlu diperhatikan selain perizinan, kemudian produk apa saja yang boleh dan enggak, kemudian juga jumlah yang diminta, dan seterusnya. Apalagi masalah logistik ya. Uh, mahal right. atau tidak ongkos pengirimannya dan seterusnya. Kayak gitu sih, Mbak. Right. So there are a, a lot of additional costs Pasti. when it comes to MSME's products in Indonesia. Yes. And yes. our internal product is one, how to keep the consistency of the quality. And can we produce that amount of volume in order to yes. export? I guess that's a different story. Yeah. Uh, oh. If we want to do like MSMEs go global through digital. 
Ya, walaupun juga ini misalnya kita ngomongnya door to door ya, door to door experience artinya produk bisa dikirim, tapi kan apakah itu worth enough or not because the logistic cost and something like that. Right, correct. Might as well maybe get somewhere from China that is cheaper and a lot of um, options. More volume, yeah. right? Yeah, that's always been the case, unfortunately. Okay, uh, when we, we talk about digitalization, we again, we're talking about cost, right? Maybe, uh, Ambassador Lila, well, you can share. Um, let's say if we want to talk about Hungary, uh, what is the strategy to reduce the uh, MSMEs who has a limited budget and they want to digitize? What was the, uh, What is the strategy there in, in Hungary? Uh, this is one uh, question from our audience. And then also from um, Dimas, maybe you can share about this, you know, like one of your merchants, they probably want to, you know, uh, they want to sell outside Indonesia. And what will be like the strategy for them to do in, uh, in order to do that? Silakan, Ambassador. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. So thank you very much for the question. I think um, since uh, COVID just recently happened, we can also divide this question into what is the short, medium and long-term uh, aim of the Hungarian government to support the SM, uh, SMEs and also during the COVID, how we could deal with it because at the moment they are, um, uh, they are bonding uh, with each other. Just very um, shortly, I uh, would like to introduce what exactly Hungary did, and I think it was very successful. So beside uh, helping the companies, um, the digitalization, uh, Hungary also put great emphasis on the digitaliz uh, digitalizing the public administration. So we were not giving uh, support, like financial support directly to the companies to pay mm -hmm. their uh, um their employees uh, and uh, that is like um, just a solution that can solve the today's problem but not the long uh, issues for example the annual tax statement uh, can be done fully online uh, what is more our system can be pre-generate the tax report for uh, every user which saves them a lot of hours of paperwork uh, another widely popular innovation is the e-prescription uh, through which doctors can send medicine prescription to patients directly via cloud, which can be easily retrieved uh, at pharmacies. Uh, but uh, this system can be used for a number of other things as well. For example, the COVID-19 vaccine certificate uh, administration. So these are, although uh, are for the society to uh, make their lives easier, but through that, the companies can also save some time and money, for example, the tax report. Mm -hmm. uh, also Hungary, uh, the government um, has many programs also uh, as for the education and finances as well. Uh, Hungary uh, plans to extend, for example, the Modern Enterprise Program and launch a new financing scheme for business digitalization. Uh, to close the digital gap between Hungarian SMEs and the EU average, uh, it is not necessary not only to increase the size of the support, but also its effectiveness, because we have uh, several bodies, governmental bodies, who are trying to help, and I assume this is very similar here in Indonesia as well. There are plenty of ministries and uh, those um, um, NGOs or other uh, bodies which are not really coordinating together sometimes. And then there are duplications or maybe they are kind of competing with, with each other instead of coordinating and, uh, and help uh, and build on each other's. So uh, for that, Hungary uh, recently uh, are figure it out and try to um, structure, uh, structureize uh, the roles of each of these programs and also how we can contribute financially and educationally as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you make, make business easier to grow, I guess, to flourish in Hungary without necessarily giving them incentives, so say subsidize whatever they need, right? By giving like a, a right policies to do it. I would say we give every tools as we can, uh, as for the investment, uh, tax um, holidays, or or every kind of tools like how they can, for example, export. Because many countries, uh, companies for the SMEs, we are very eager uh, that to uh, make them uh, available their products, the production to uh, export to other uh, countries. Uh, since uh, in Hungary, ninety nine point eight percent 
of the companies are SMEs. So mm -hmm. it's very crucial for us to support them uh, on every uh, way. Very well. Uh, Dimas, uh, how to minimize the spending if MSMEs has a limited budget, but they want to go digital? Um, yeah, as mentioned earlier, uh, and uh, it's almost free actually to go digital right now. Uh, obviously, uh, it's probably not very wise for any brands to try to build their own website. So, for example, uh, brandx.com, brandy.com, because building a, a, an own website is very expensive. I mean, building it is easy. But making sure, you know, myself, Andini, uh, Ambassador Lila, uh, Pandreas wants to visit your website requires tons of money. So the easiest way for, I mean, the simplest and easiest way to actually go into digital mm. without spending so much money is uh, probably two things. Number one, uh, build your social media. I think things like Instagram, uh, nurture mm -hmm. it. Because I think right now, uh, customers, uh, the, the journey when they go and, and see your brand, they will typically start from Instagram. They don't immediately buy, but then they go to Instagram to actually check whether the brand exists, whether it's actually legitimate or it's actually kind of fake. And Instagram yeah. is a good platform to actually provide uh, the kind of trust answers to, to all the brands. And it's free and it's still anyway, relatively cheaper than building a, like and maintaining a website. And number two is basically joining marketplaces. I mean, we have Blibli, we have Tokopedia, and we also have like a vertical uh, marketplaces. We are in home and living. I'm sure there are ones in fashion uh, and in beauty. So again, uh, really depends on what kind of products that uh, you are in. And I think the, the summary is the word is leverage. Leverage guys like, you know, us, Blibli and the rest, uh, because we are the one who actually had to help them and you know uh, we had the budget which we spent on so that's that's probably the simplest way so like two things in summary one build a trust uh, build a strong social media presence but focusing so much on actually branding and, and, and actually answering people's questions then list the product in as many as you know vertical good vertical commerce uh, as possible and and i think every single marketplace has ways and means to actually promote the products and mm -hmm. certain segments to get in. Yeah, I think um, that's probably the simplest answer uh, I need to actually answer that, yeah. Very well, very well. This is a question for Ambassador Morikawa. Uh, Ambassador, this question is from Francinaga Uki, but I would like to take this question further. Uh, he asked about the, uh, the role of asset for developing sustainable economy between Asia and European, uh, especially in MS, MSM, MSMEs area, but uh, here's the thing though. I noticed there are like concerns. Let's say we have products from Indonesia and then we would like to export it to Europe, let's say, and then they always want to look for traceability, right? Is it sustainable enough? What is the impact to the people, to the environment, that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, we're trying to apply that here, the SDGs value, right? And then it's, it's, a, it's a hit and miss sometimes, right? Especially with MSMEs. So um, how do we maintain this so we can sell and basically be accepted in the European market and uh, make it more sustainable as a business and as a product as well? Thank you, thank you. So uh, this is very, very uh, important uh, matter for the MSAEs to do a uh, business uh, yeah, uh, in the reality. So I think that we need some, uh, the, the, gov the, the government and the international cooperation should be more user-friendly, that uh, we should uh, coordinate uh, the system, uh, always thinking about that uh, how how that the, the 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 people in the MSME uh, uh, do uh, how use this uh, how to use this uh, scheme. So uh, yes, sometimes that there is uh, uh, there is a lot of the agreement systems and uh, uh, and uh, there are sometimes it is called the spaghetti ball of the, the agreement. Mm. And uh, for the companies, it's very difficult. Oh, what what kind of the maybe there are the uh, preferential uh, treatment, but uh, it's very difficult to find which scheme is uh, applicable to me. So I think that the, the challenge is there uh, between Asia and Europe that to uh, 
become more user friendly. Mm. And for that, we need to advocate the practitioners and to find uh, the way to uh, where to start, uh, where to start, and how what is the priority. And I think that Asia between Asia and Europe that this kind of the, the conversation should be more uh, done. Uh, that with APEC, in APEC, with uh, Asia Pacific Corporation, I think this kind of the, uh, the cooperation is being done very a lot. That APEC, that, uh, the, which the Indonesia is a very important member economy, mm -hmm. uh, doing the, for example, that uh, the e commerce related project, they have been doing 50 uh, projects over decades. But for uh, ASEM and ASEP, that are the connectivity document has been uh, adapted, and the chair statement there is a one paragraph on the promotion of the uh, uh, SMME digitalization. Mm -hmm. Yes, so there is a political will. So it's a uh, it's for us now that for the practitioners to to work together to open the uh, door for that. Thank you. Mm. Very well, very well. Uh, maybe dari Mas Andreas atau Mas Dimas, Ambassador Lila, you can also uh, jump in on this. Like, uh, is it like important right now as a producer, as a merchant, to produce like a, a responsible products? Let's say if we want to go global, especially entering the European market where sustainability is one of the value that they, uh, they, they really look at you know, when, when they're purchasing something. Is it something that we can develop or it, are we already there? Maybe you know better, Mas Andreas, Mas Dimas. Okay. So what's the situation now? Okay, uh, kalau dari sisi kami, dari Blibli yang selama ini menampung almost all kind of products ya tentunya ya. Jadi mm -hmm. uh, memang ada sih beberapa produk yang memang diarahkan ke sana, hmm. tapi dari satu sisi itu is still not popular lah, I guess. Right, karena me right. memang karena memang pangsa pasar mereka belum berpikir sejauh itu. Mereka mungkin hanya sekedar untuk dari community atau orang sekitar atau mungkin hanya all very Indonesia. Very segmented market. Yes, correct. Care about it. Yeah. 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 Jadi uh, mungkin sama ada gitu beberapa ada, tapi tidak 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 semua berpikir ke arah sana. Mm -hmm. Karena yang UMKM atau SME think about ya adalah yang pertama adalah bisnis mereka running running dulu jalan dulu gitu. The others mungkin belakangan itu sih mm -hmm. yang saya lihat. Nah dengan adanya uh, masuk ke ranah digital seperti tempatnya saya ataupun tempatnya Mas Dimas, tentunya itu itu dulu tahap awal mereka. Mereka join suatu dunia yang baru, punya online, punya offline gitu ya. Terus right. mencoba untuk uh, memaksimalkan kapasitas mereka di online seperti apa yang mereka bisa. Jadi okay. untuk yang lain-lain akan menyusul pastinya gitu. Thank right, you, so man. business first and sustainability in the long term. <laughs> Mas, Mas Dimas, uh, what about you? I, I, I mean, furniture. That's one of like the in the main uh, products or commodities yang yeah. has to so, be traceable. Uh, the traceability-nya clear. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I'm I'm probably is a bit different with furniture as mentioned. Mm -hmm. So yes, of course, business comes first, mm -hmm. uh, and it depends on what they're trying to do. So if let's say the market is probably majority of them are in Indonesia, and because anyway, Indonesia is a big market on its own. Uh, I, I think sustainability will probably come when our GDP hits 6,000, 7,000, probably in the next three, four years. I think that's when um, people are more, uh, you know, um, wealthy enough to actually uh, have uh, understanding, a little bit more budget to, you know, uh, thinking about the sustainability for the future. I think that's mm -hmm. probably the major big differences between developing countries and developed countries such as in Europe. And uh, my master degree is actually on environmental engineering. So sustainability mm -hmm. was one of the topic. I took it in the Netherlands, you know, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, but again, I think in the, in the world of furniture, uh, it's a bit different with uh, what Pa Andrea said. So uh, I think if we split um, out of the merchants that joining us, 30, 40% of them are actually exporter. So basically, they uh, it's a bit different. So they have been actually exporting products to Japan, to Australia, US, Europe uh, for probably one two decades uh, um, has been has been doing it. 
and I think the kind of uh, traceability, sustainability is a common thing happening uh, for them. So it's nothing new for them. Mm. Uh, they struggle entering local markets. So I think that's just a bit, you know, a paradox here. Uh, well, um, on the other hand, seventy uh, percent of the merchants in Indonesia, I would say the interest of pushing their products overseas are still very limited. So probably a bit like 20 percent that started, uh, you know, thinking about export. But yeah. those are very, you know, high quality, high value handcraft uh, products, uh, mm-hmm. not not on into the mass market uh, stuff. So I think in terms of scale, it's also very very small. So again, yeah. Um, if if I think the the conclusion is uh, for industrial furniture, those that are doing export, mm-hmm. it's something very common for them. Uh, but the rest, you are still focusing in Indonesian local market. Uh, it's probably not in their uh, priority right now. But from my understanding, when the GDP per capita of Indonesia starts hitting six to seven thousand, uh, that's when you know uh, the trend will shift. That's what happened with China. I mean, five years ago, no such thing. But now, actually, it is a thing. So that's that's probably the differences. Yeah, mm-hmm. because there's a market for it. For, for 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 from the Chinese uh, uh, producers, right? So Ambassador Lila, maybe maybe from your side, so is it is it like something really important, something that we need to look at for a long term vision of MSMEs companies if we want to enter, say, Hungary, uh, sustainable products? How can we can trace the 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 product itself? Is that something that matters for you? I think that's definitely very important. However, uh, and that now I'm talking about the European Union and Indonesia uh, relations, uh, we also have to see the politics because in this case, uh, yeah, the re- European Union is very hard on Indonesia as for the sustainability, such as the palm oil issue. Um, from the Hungarian point of view, we, we rather think this is an internal affair and it is not, um, should be, um, uh, how to say, uh, stopped or controlled, uh, limited because of the uh, because of the regulation of the European Union. Mm-hmm. So I think the narration is definitely matters like how we try to um, help and support Indonesia to find the SDGs. Um, from business wise, it's a very very different question because uh, sometimes there is a demand that overrides uh, the regulation. Since uh, in the European Union we has huge demand, and not just because of the current situation, the economic situation, uh, because of the war, but anyway there is a demand, for example, for the palm oil. So in this case, uh, to improve our own uh, economy, sometimes we have to be a bit more flexible. Uh, just to give you an example, just imagine that because of the, let's say, the European uh, Union, Indonesia, SIPA, which is like for the economic cooperation, is not going to work and the uh, European Union com- uh, companies may be banned or didn't get some export um, protocol, then uh, Indonesian company, dairy producer uh, or manufacturer com- uh, company cannot import from Europe a certain type of, let's say, milk. So their product will be completely different if they have to import from, let's say, the USA or New Zealand, because it's not the same product, it's a bit different. And then it also weakens the Indonesian market, because they cannot produce the very same product as they did, maybe the quality drops. So in my opinion, it is, on one side, yes, very important sustainability, and Hungary also uh, support on every way the uh, SMEs to find these um, goals. On the other hand, it cannot be mixed with the politics or uh, on the cost of the politics. It cannot uh, cannot weaken uh, the opportunity for the Indonesian SMEs. Mm-hmm. So that on a good note like that, I would like to ask all the speakers now, as we know, we cannot really avoid the topics of what is going on, the uh, current geopolitical upheaval in, in Europe. But in terms of that and in correlation that what we're trying to do here, uh, uh, how to digitalize MSMEs and bridging uh, ASEM economic recovery Post pandemic, still in the pandemic, but we're we're talking about recovery now. That's the focus. Should it be like a, something that you know we should maybe we just wait and see, you know, what is going on with Europe, or should we just seek an opportunity right now? This is the right time to go. Asia goes to Europe, you know, no matter what is going on, we still have to go. Should we hinder or should we take this opportunity? 
onwards. Mas Andreas, you can answer first, and then naman Saru Merikawa, Mas Rewila, and then Mas Dimas. Oke, okay, thank you Mbak. Jadi uh, kalau melihat dari perkembangan yang seperti ini, Europe itu kan besar ya. It's a big. Uh, jadi buat kita sih nggak ada, uh, menurut kami sih tidak ada masalah ya, as long we have the right partner uh, di sana gitu. Jadi uh, tidak apa pengaruh lah, selama juga SMI yang ada di sini juga memenuhi uh, kondisi and syarat-syarat yang mereka tentukan apa terapkan tentunya no, it will be no problem at all sih. Very well, Ambassador Morikawa. You're still on mute, I think. Yes. Yeah, okay. thank you. So uh, we we foresee the uh, the economic difficulties uh, the, the coming from the uh, yeah current situation, but that that, that uh, it means that we need more uh, efficient economic uh, activity. So we 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 have to double our uh, efforts to make all these uh, digitalized uh, e-commerce uh, easier. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Ambassador Lila. I think this is uh, also, I would go back to the politics. It is rather a political question because, um, for example, last week I just met uh, with the chairman of Kadin, uh, Mr. Rashad, and uh, we were discussing about, for example, if Hungary could sell some uh, wheat to Indonesia because they are short, uh, right. because Ukraine cannot uh, send them at the moment. Uh, and uh, for sure, this is a very interesting question. Maybe even if Hungary would have the uh, the amount, which we don't because we are a much smaller country that the demand uh, can fulfill, uh, it also wouldn't be ethical. So we need to see for sure what kind of product we are talking about. Those products which are basic, such as wheat, I think uh, uh, countries shouldn't take an advantage on this uh, very serious situation unless uh, it cannot, um, um, how to say, uh, ensure that the, mar uh, that the trade um, um, competition can be uh, still uh, sustainable and it can still enable the other competitors to, to have a healthy competition. Mm. So I think in this case, um, For sure, I would say that some of the products may have the opportunity, uh, which uh, naturally was difficult to, to bring from one place to another. But I would rather say this is not the situation at the moment. And there are rather uh, products which are uh, for the basic needs. Therefore, I think uh, sometimes it would be considered unethical to sell something, let's say, on a much higher price. Right, right. Very well. Uh, Dimas. Yeah, like so. Probably I can only speak on behalf of the home and living industry, uh, and and probably taking a broader look on on not just probably Europe and what happening now. So I think in general, um, you know, things like uh, COVID and what we have seen in Europe, it's unfortunate. Uh, however, uh, I would say, uh, coming from a like a totally digital background, um, uh, all those um, you know digitalization that happened not just in Indonesia, uh, but probably started in, in Europe, US, China has actually integrated uh, the market. And, and right now, as I mentioned, doing business is 10 times easier than before. And uh, the challenge, I think, uh, like how are we able to actually ensure the supply chain and uh, can, can be sorted out? Um, mm -hmm. The opportunity is big because I think uh, what happened in the past three, four years, especially during COVID, there was a shift in the way, uh, you know, the global supply and demands are happening. So to give a perspective, China was severely affected as uh, probably the world largest furniture makers. Right now, Vietnam, uh, actually for the past three, four years has been rising. And probably, unfortunately, they are probably becoming uh, bigger than Indonesia. If I mean, uh, as a country, we don't actually develop the industry further. But it's just you know to, to give a perspective that the opportunity is always there. It's becoming easier than ever. Um, supply chain is going to be an issue. So I think uh, it's really up to us uh, on how we leverage uh, the opportunity. And I think the 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 bad things in the world. Or will not be forever. I'm sure there will be like a light at the end of the tunnel. And I think that's what everybody wish. And by then, um, probably the question is like, where do we want to be as a business, as a nation, as a, mm -hmm. as a government? Yeah, so probably that's the only one we need. Yeah. 
Very well. Well, uh, there's always an opportunity uh, that needs to develop. I hope that, that that opportunity and the time is now for Asia and Europe to be closer, especially from MSME's uh, point of view. And then hopefully we'll see more of Indonesian small and medium enterprises products in Indonesia, uh, in, in Europe, particularly in Hungary, Ambassador Lila. Hopefully that will be something that we can look forward to. Thank you very much to all the speakers and all to all the participants who are already joining us and sent out your questions. Unfortunately, due to time limitations, we cannot provide uh, the questions to be answered by the panelists. However, for those of you, for five participants based in Indonesia with the most interesting questions, we'll receive a goodie bag from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And also for those of you who would like to have a certificate, please fill out the attendance form uh, through the link provided in the chat box. Also tick the e-certificate box. If shall you wish to receive an e-certificate for, uh, for your participation from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank you very much for attending this year's ASM Day celebration. Hopefully, today's event will promote even stronger partnerships between Asia and Europe. And hopefully, you enjoy the uh, fruitful discussion that we have this afternoon. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. It's at KSIA Merop underscore Kemlu. Again, at KSIA Merop underscore Kemlu. Post your Instagram story of today's event and quote uh, some of our speakers' uh, statements. Uh, and then five lucky participants based in Indonesia also will get a goodie bag from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Wow, you get a lot of goodie bags just by listening to this uh, program. Thank you very much again, all the speakers. Ho I hope to see you in person. Hope we can uh, celebrate ASM Day next year, Vir not virtually, but offline because we need to do it offline, right, one day. Thank you very much once again to, uh, to those of you who are attending, and I hope to see you again at ASM Day 2023. Goodbye. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye. Don't forget to send the link, guys, to fill out the links. Thank you.